don't need a man. Karen was 29 years old. She lived alone. She had a few friends, but didn't feel the need to hang out with them too much. She had a few boyfriends, but no one was worth staying with. She was a nurse at a hospital. She loved her job because she liked taking care of people. Karen's parents visited her one day out of the blue. She started to get worried. Why did they drive all the way here? It was a six hour drive. Karen's parents always worried about her. She and her parents sat in the living room. So, why are you guys here? Karen asked. Well, we were talking about you and your future. You're 29, but you're not married yet. All your cousins are already married, her mom said. Karen groaned. This wasn't the first time they mentioned it. Every time Karen went to a cousin's wedding, her parents would mention something about Karen being unmarried. Karen was annoyed that her parents wanted her to get married. She was fine being alone, she could support herself. Why don't you try dating my friend's son? He's 35, smart, and kind, her dad said. I don't like being set up, Karen said. He might be really great, her dad said. I don't need a man. I'll get married when the time is right, Karen said. Aren't you lonely? her mom asked. No, I'm happy with my job and the life I live, she said. Karen's parents weren't happy with her answer, but they accepted that they couldn't change her mind. The Job Search Mary wanted to get a job to save up money for her future. She did not want to keep asking her parents for money. She thought getting a job would be a good way to build her experience. Since she never had a job before, she decided to start with a simple part time job. There were a lot of options out there. She could be a cashier, a tutor, a waitress, or an usher. She decided that a cashier job would be most suited for her. This was a job that seemed simple enough that she could learn. It would also let her interact with people, which was her favorite thing to do. Mary did not have a car, so she needed to find a job that was close to her home and school. She was still going to school, so she needed to find a job that was flexible. She walked around the restaurants and stores in her neighborhood. Some were hiring, others had all their positions filled up. She applied to 10 different places. Her top choice was her favorite frozen yogurt shop. The application usually asked for a resume, a cover letter, and an application. She was excited to continue with her job search. Two weeks later, five places contacted her for an interview. They were the movie theater, the yogurt shop, a candy shop, a video game store, and a coffee shop. She did not mind any of the jobs. She was happy with all the offers she received. The Rainy Days The sky had been gloomy all week. The clouds looked stormy and gray. It suggested a forecast of rain and thunder. The next day it began to rain. It did not just sprinkle, it poured. It was raining extremely hard. Most people stayed indoors to avoid the rain. Those who were outside wore heavy raincoats and carried umbrellas. Outside, there were rivers that flowed through the streets. When cars drove by, the water splashed on pedestrians. For those that enjoyed rain, it was nice to finally see the rain. Some children loved to jump in puddles and show off their new rain boots to their friends. However, many did not enjoy the rain. It was difficult for people to go out when it was raining. It was inconvenient for those who had to go to work or school. Driving was also harder in the rain. No one was at the park or at the beach. If they did go out, they would get soaked in the rain. The only thing people could do was stay indoors, whether it is the mall or museum. Some took this opportunity to stay at home and watch a movie. Others cooked meals or curled up with a good book. The next day, the rain stopped. The sky cleared up. A beautiful rainbow appeared. The sky was blue, and people started to come out. There were no more umbrellas and raincoats. It was not warm yet, and people still needed sweaters, but most were happy to stay dry. Different morning routines. People have different routines every morning. There is something we all do before we start each of our days. Linda and Tom are twins, but they do different things every morning. Tom starts his day by turning on his playlist. He plays music to get him excited for the day and to wake him up. He likes to listen to upbeat pop songs that inspire him to begin the day with a good start. He then goes to the bathroom, brushes his teeth, and washes his faith. He has his clothes laid out on the chair the night before. After he has combed his hair, he then eats cereal for breakfast. 
He packs his stuff into his backpack. He makes sure he does not forget anything, especially his phone and wallet. He makes sure that he has all his homework also. Linda starts her morning every day without music. Instead, she sets multiple alarms because it's hard for her to get up. She will then go to the restroom, similar to Tom. She puts her contacts in since she does not wear glasses. After that, she eats breakfast. Linda likes to eat waffles for breakfast. She makes these with a waffle maker. She usually just eats them plain, but sometimes she adds strawberries. She then packs her lunch for school since she does not like the school lunch. She usually makes a sandwich. Sometimes she even makes one for Tom. She changes her clothes last. A cheap birthday gift. Antonio was known for being cheap. He grew up with poor parents who taught him how to save money. Antonio would do things like stealing toilet paper from public bathrooms, bringing food home from buffets, and ordering the cheapest thing on the menu. His friends sometimes got annoyed with him. His friend Jimmy was having a birthday party. Antonio knew that he had to give him a gift. He didn't want to, but he had to. Antonio tried to think of a good, cheap gift. I could get him a coffee mug, he thought. He went to the dollar store and bought a mug. The mug was white and had the letter J on it. Antonio thought it was a nice gift, and most important, he only had to spend a dollar on it. Antonio put the mug in a nice gift bag he got for his own birthday. There was no way he would spend money on a gift bag. Antonio went to Jimmy's house. There were 20 people at the party. Jimmy had 20 gifts. At the end of the day, Jimmy opened up everyone's gifts. Jimmy received some pretty great gifts. Some of the gifts he got include a video game in high demand, gift cards, and a leather jacket. Jimmy finally opened Antonio's gift. Jimmy didn't expect much from Antonio. He reached inside the bag and pulled out the mug. He actually really liked it. He was pleasantly surprised. Then he noticed the price tag was still there. It said one dollar. Learning how to drive. John turned 16 a couple of months ago, which meant that he was old enough to get his driving license. He was excited about this because he hated walking. His school was far from home. He had to walk over 30 minutes to school. It was okay on most days, but when it was raining, he hated it. It was also inconvenient when he had to wake up early. John decided to prepare for his driving test. He must pass the written test in order to get his permit. He studied for the test by enrolling in an online course. He spent a few hours reading the manual and learning about the rules of the road. In a few weeks, he was ready for the test. He brought all his documents and took the written test. When, he's got, when he got his results, he was happy to see that he had passed. Now all he had to do was to take the road test. Before he could take the road test, he had to learn how to drive. His parents found a driving teacher that his cousin had used. He was going to meet with him in a week to learn how to drive. When he first got behind the wheel, he was nervous. After a few lessons, he loved driving. John was excited to take the test. He felt confident he would do well. The next day, he signed up for the driving test. Homecoming Queen Deborah is running for homecoming queen at the high school she just transferred to a few days ago. Deborah and Sarah put up posters. The poster had a picture of Deborah with her list of accomplishments and characteristics. Deborah was a pageant contestant a couple of years ago, a 4.0 student, and a volunteer at the animal shelter. Classmates came up to Deborah after school to tell her how great she was. Deborah thanked them. Sarah came up to Deborah after school. Hi, I'm Sarah. Look, I wanted to give you some advice. I think you should drop out of the homecoming race. You're a new student, she said. I know, and I think that this is a great opportunity to get to meet people. I've already met so many people since running for homecoming queen, Deborah said. Don't say I didn't warn you, Sarah said. Deborah wore a long gold dress to homecoming. Her parents were so proud of her, and they took a lot of pictures of their daughter. Deborah went to homecoming with Kimberly and some other friends. The homecoming dance was inside the gym. It was decorated nicely. Deborah danced with her friends. A guy asked Deborah to the dance, but she said no. Later, the principal came out on the stage. He was going to announce the homecoming queen and king. Your homecoming queen is... 
Deborah, he said. Deborah was happily surprised. People cheered for her and said kind words. Sarah rolled her eyes and left the dance. Deborah went up to the stage and made a speech about taking chances. She was off to a good start at her new school. Riding a roller coaster. At Sunflower Middle School, the eighth graders would all go to the amusement park to celebrate the graduation and finally entering high school. Robert's group of friends were all excited to go, but he wasn't. The truth was that Robert was afraid of heights. At lo a lot of the rides at the amusement park were fast and high. Robert didn't want to admit to his friends that he was afraid of heights. They would probably make fun of him and tell him he's not being a man. Robert told his teacher that he had a family trip that day. But Robert, it's a free trip to one of the most popular amusement parks in America, his teacher said. His friend overheard Robert saying he could not go. Robert, you have to go. Don't you want to spend time with us? We're all going to different high schools, Michael said. This was true. Maybe he can just go on the rides that are not roller coasters. Michael decided to go. He did want to see his friends one last time. At the amusement park, his friends wanted to go on the tallest ride first. Robert felt his hands shaking. His friends all got in line. As they got closer to the front of the line, Robert's hands started sweating. When they reached the front, Robert couldn't move. Robert, come on, it's our turn, one of his friends said. I'm too scared. I can't, he said. Just try it. You might like it, his friend said. Robert took a deep breath and went on the ride. He closed his eyes and the roller coaster took off. Robert actually liked it. He loved how the wind felt rushing against him. When they got off the ride, he wanted to go again. An intern's first day at a law firm. Maria was an intern at a law firm. Her eventual goal was to become an environmental lawyer. Getting an internship was a great way to learn more and make her resume look better. The internship was unpaid, but she was okay with that. Maria was nervous on her first day. She made sure she looked professional. She wore a white collared shirt, a navy blue blazer, a pencil skirt, and black heels. She put her hair in a ponytail and wore a pearl necklace. Maria entered the law firm and looked around her. Everyone looked so busy and professional. She liked that. Maria went to her boss, Susan. Susan has been a lawyer for 20 years and won many of her cases. Susan looked mean, but Maria was ready to make her like her. Maria and Susan shook hands. Susan had a firm grip. First, I want you to get me a cup of coffee. No creamer or sugar, she said. Sure, what would you like me to do next, Maria asked. I'll let you know after you get me my coffee, Susan said. Maria came back with the coffee. Susan took the coffee and drank it. Okay, now I want you to drive to the nearest grocery store and buy my groceries, she said. Maria was shocked. She thought she would be doing more important work. What does this have to do with law, Maria asked. Are you questioning my knowledge of law? Susan asked. Maria immediately froze. She shook her head no. She obeyed her orders and then sent Susan emails saying that she quit. To enter the pie eating contest. Earl used to be overweight. He managed to lose 15 pounds in two years though. He's very proud of himself. One day he went to the county fair where there were a Ferris wheel, roller coasters, games, food, and contests. This was Earl's first time at the county fair. He was with his cousins. They first went on the Ferris wheel. Earl loved it because he got to see the view from above. Everything and everyone looked so small. Next, Earl and his cousins went to a ring toss booth. Earl was really good at it. He even won the grand prize, a huge stuffed dolphin. He gave it to his youngest cousin. Earl and his cousins walked around. Earl was getting hungry. He saw a cotton candy booth. He was tempted to buy one, but he was doing so good on his diet. There were a lot of good foods such as corn dog, chili cheese fries, pizza, and fried cookies. There were no healthy food though. Earl and his cousins kept walking around. They noticed a booth for a pie eating contest. Whoever could eat the most pies would win a $50 gift certificate to Pie O, a popular pie place in the county. Earl's cousins encouraged him to enter the contest. Earl was known for eating fast. Earl said it would be bad for his health, but he entered the contest anyway. He felt like he deserved some pie. 
Earl ended up winning the competition. He gave the gift certificate to the cousin who motivated him to lose weight. She quit her job at the store. Dorothy currently works at a local grocery store. She gets a minimum wage, which is ten fifty per hour in California. It is not enough money, especially since she wants to travel to Europe this summer. First, Dorothy tried asking her manager for a raise. He said no because she has only been working for six months. Dorothy picked up another job as a tutor. She tutored high school students for thirty dollars per hour. She would go to their house. She taught all subjects. Dorothy had good grades and was smart. Because of this, a lot of parents hired her. They trusted her to help their kids. Dorothy was good at all subjects and had a 4.0 grade average. She also went to a top university. While she was teaching, she realized that she enjoyed teaching. Seeing kids' faces light up when they understood something was amazing. It was great to see how she was actually helping these kids learn. Dorothy decided to quit her job at the grocery store. She started to apply to schools for a teaching credential. She decided that traveling to Europe can wait. Months later, Dorothy found out she got into all the schools she applied to. She picked a school in San Francisco and loved it. After graduation, she found a job teaching back at the high school she attended as a teenager. The physical education class. During the physical education class, the students played a lot of different sports. They played kickball, soccer, basketball, and dodgeball. Whatever sport it was, they always picked teams. The captain was assigned randomly, and then the captains got to pick who was on their team. Michael was not very good at sports. He felt insecure when it came to picking teams. He was almost always the last or close to the end. Because of this, Michael hated sports. He did not want to try, as he knew he was not good at it. The other kids would make fun of him about how he always got picked last. One day, Michael asked his teacher if he could not participate. He was tired of the other kids laughing at him. His teacher told him that sports were not for everyone, but if he wanted to try, he could help him. He gave him other options instead of the typical sports they had. The teacher also decided to do random teams instead, so that everyone would have a chance. Michael liked this better. He felt less pressured. He was no longer singled out. This made him want to participate more. He became faster and more skilled in everything. He even began to like the class. He enjoyed it much more when it was less about who was better and more about participating. Michael now played sports even outside the physical education class. Not to give any spoilers. Everyone at Jefferson High School was reading How to Save a Life, which was a book about a student's journey in medical school. The book got really popular around the United States. It will become a movie sometime in 2021. Some students were ahead of others in the book. Some students were already done with the book. Laura was halfway through with the book. She really liked it and could hardly put it down. She just finished the chapter where the main character falls in love with a patient who is dying of cancer. Laura's friends already finished the book, so she told them not to give any spoilers. Spoilers are parts of the story that reveal important details before a person gets to that part of the story. Spoilers ruin the fun of not knowing. It's like knowing how a movie ends when you are just starting to watch the movie. Laura's friend was about to say something about the book, but Laura stopped her. "No spoilers, guys. I want to enjoy this book," she said. Laura was reading the book on the bus. A couple on the bus started talking about the book. Laura started to panic. She put on her headphones and listened to music throughout the entire bus ride. Laura continued reading the book when she got home. Her mom came into her room. That is such a good book. I'm so glad you're reading it. Have you got to the part where the main character is told she also has cancer? Her mom said. Mom, I'm only halfway. Laura exclaimed. Her mom apologized. Laura put the book back in her bookshelf and never touched it again. We'll get married eventually. John and Betty have been dating for five years. They got together at the end of college, but they were friends before. John and Betty were a good couple. They rarely fought. They never got jealous, and they respected each other. They managed to make problems go away. For example, after college, John was planning to go to medical school in Washington. Betty was planning to stay in California. 
However, they talked it out and John decided to enroll in a medical school in California. He didn't mind changing his plans for Betty. She was worth it. Right now, John is in residency, which means that he has finished medical school and is now working under a doctor at a hospital. Betty is an investment banker at Wells Fargo. Betty feels that they have been dating long enough to get married. They have been living together for almost four years. They knew each other's habits and were comfortable with each other. Over dinner, Betty brings it up. John sighs. I want to get married at some point, but not now. I'm trying to pay off my medical school debt, he said. Why don't we just borrow some money from my parents? They wouldn't mind, Betty said. True, but I would, he said. Let go of your pride, Betty said. We'll get married eventually, don't worry. At the end of the day, marriage doesn't mean that much. As long as we love each other, that's okay, John said. He has a point, she thought. Betty believed that they would be together forever. Margaret liked taking pictures. Margaret always liked taking pictures. She believed that a picture can make anything beautiful. She brought her camera everywhere, even if she was doing simple tasks like going grocery shopping. Margaret especially liked taking pictures of her friends when they didn't expect it. She liked capturing people's natural reactions. Some of Margaret's friends didn't like it when she did this, though. Margaret had a website where she put samples of her photography. There were some pictures of people, some pictures of views, and some pictures of food. She decided to offer her skills for money. People could fill out a form on her website requesting her to take pictures of them. Her rate was $30 per hour. She wasn't getting that many requests. It made her feel like her work wasn't good. Her friends suggested advertising her website on social media. When she did that, more requests came in. Day after day, people would request Margaret to take their pictures. In June, there were over 50 requests because people wanted graduation pictures. Margaret had to stop taking requests, though, because she was too busy. Margaret made a lot of money from taking pictures. She used the money to buy a new camera. A bad roommate. Lisa lived with four other girls in one apartment. She was close friends with three of them. However, Lisa did not like Nancy. She did not like how Nancy never washed her clothes or cleaned around the apartment. Nancy was just so messy. Lisa tried telling her to be more clean. All Nancy said was, I can do whatever I want. If you don't like my messiness, that's your problem. After this encounter, Lisa tried to avoid talking to her. Lisa would never start a conversation with her. She would only talk to Nancy if she absolutely had to. One day, Lisa noticed that her charger was missing. She always plucked her charger by her bed. She checked around her bed and under it, too. There was nothing but dust. Did Nancy take it? She wasn't that bad, or was she? Lisa didn't want to accuse her, so she just asked, Did you happen to see my charger? Oh yes, I used it last night and forgot to give it to you, Nancy said. Nancy handed the charger to Lisa as if nothing was wrong. Lisa glared at Nancy. You can't just take my things without my permission, Lisa said. I didn't think it was a big deal. It's just a charger, Nancy said. Yeah, but it's mine, so you need to ask me first, Lisa said. Okay, fine, Nancy said. Nancy never touched Lisa's things ever again. Embarrassing Moments Ruth was very clumsy and often fell at the worst times possible. Last year, she tripped and fell into a tray of food at the cafeteria. Another year, she fell in the middle of a lecture, and all the other students looked at her. People knew Ruth was prone to accidents, and she felt super embarrassed when these events happened. She knew that everyone thought she was weird. This year, she was determined to be more careful and avoid any accidents. However, she could not keep her resolution. Ruth was walking in the rain and somehow managed to fall. Her fall not only caused her to slip, it also caused her to crash into a trash can. This trash can knocked down other trash cans, starting a domino effect, which left a trail of trash everywhere next to her. The trash smelled with all the old food that students have thrown away. Instead of laughing at her, many of the students helped her. They helped pick up the trash. They also helped her up and asked if she was okay. She felt so touched by the help she received. She no longer felt embarrassed or pressured. In the past, Ruth was always felt embarrassed. She thought that everyone looked down on her. She now learned that no one was judging her. She knew that she should be more careful. However, she was careful for herself, not for other people. She no longer had embarrassing moments because she no longer felt embarrassed.
Moving into the dorm. Michael is a freshman at UCLA. He is going to live in the dorms. Before then, he lived with his parents. His parents are happy for him, but sad that they won't get to see him as much. Michael has two roommates. One of them is his friend from high school. The other one is someone he does not know. Michael didn't bring that many things to the dorm. He knew that the dorms at UCLA are pretty small. When Michael and his parents entered the room, both of his roommates were already in there. "Michael, what's up?" William exclaimed. Michael and William hugged. They were excited to be continuing their adventures in college. The other roommate, David, was quietly at his desk. He was already studying. "Hi, I'm Michael." He extended his hand to David. David shook his hand and continued studying. "Getting an early start, huh?" Michael asked. "Yeah, I'm trying to get straight A's," David said. Michael assumed that he was very smart. "What is your major?" Michael asked. "Biology. I want to be a doctor," David said. It was now clear to Michael why David was studying so much. After Michael's parents helped him move in, they said their goodbyes. They wouldn't see him until Thanksgiving. "Hey, let's go try the dining hall food. I heard it's amazing," William said. "Sure, let's invite David too, even though he'll probably say no," Michael said. The boys asked if David wanted to come along. "Yeah, I'm actually pretty hungry," he said. The boys all went to dinner together and all of them got along. Michael had a good feeling about UCLA. He promised to never smoke again. Nicholas's dad died from smoking. His dad had lung cancer. Because of this, Nicholas's mom is against smoking. When Nicholas was little, he promised to never smoke. When he got older, however, his friends encouraged him to try it. Nicholas started smoking when he was 18 years old. At first, he would only smoke once a week. As time went on, he started smoking five cigarettes a day. He stopped for a couple years. However, he continued once he graduated from college. At Nicholas's job, everyone smoked during the break. It was hard not to smoke. If he didn't smoke, he felt like he would not be accepted. This happened to one coworker. Lawrence did not smoke. Because of this, he didn't go outside with the other coworkers during the break. He missed out on a lot of socializing and conversations about work. Lawrence did not have as many connections as Nicholas. One day, Nicholas's mom visited him at work to surprise him with lunch. When she saw him, she immediately knew he smoked because he smelled. How could you? You know your father died from smoking," she said. Nicholas's mom started crying, and his coworkers stopped what they were doing and stared. Nicholas begged his mom to stop crying and promised to never smoke again. Having a hard time getting hired. Diana wanted to be a model. She went to a lot of casting calls. She wanted to be hired to walk as a runway model. She also wanted to do advertisements, but those were harder to get. Diana had a hard time getting hired because she looked a lot like another model named Amy. Amy was an established model who has done many advertisements, commercials, and fashion shows. She was very famous. People did not want to hire Diana because they were already an Amy. Diana thought she looked different, though. She thought her face was more round. She was also skinnier. Diana went to an audition for a Gucci commercial. Gucci is an expensive clothing and accessories brand. At the audition, Diana spa- spotted Amy. In fact, Diana was right after her. There was no way she was going to get hired. After Amy finished her audition, Diana went up to the front. "Wow, didn't you just do your audition?" the casting director asked. "No, that was Amy. I'm Diana," she said. Diana performed her audition. She thought she did a good job. She did all the right poses. She knew she looked great, but she was worried about Amy. A couple of weeks later, Diana got a call from the casting director saying that she was hired. Just curious, what made you guys want to hire me over Amy? Diana asked. We wanted someone new. Amy is everywhere, he said. Diana was so happy. She celebrated by buying herself a necklace. Transferring to a different college. Lillian goes to UC Irvine. It is a good school, but Lillian does not like it. She does not think it is challenging enough. She is majoring in biology. She also does not like the people there very much. She thinks they are nice but boring. She would not miss anybody if she were to leave. She also hates the city, which is boring too. 
Lillian wants to transfer to a different college. She always wanted to go to Harvard. Her dad graduated from Harvard. Lillian tells her dad that she wants to apply. You know it's really hard to transfer from a college to Harvard, right? He asked. Lillian nods and tells him that she has nothing to lose. Lillian assures him that she will be a strong applicant. I have a 4.0 GPA, great writing skills, great rec- letters of recommendation, and internship experience, she said. Her dad doesn't think she will get in, but gives her money to apply to Harvard. Lillian submits her application. Months later, she gets a letter in the mail. It is a big envelope. She opens it quickly. She's in. She is so happy that she gets to go to Harvard. Her dad is proud of her. He knows now to never doubt Lillian. The first thing Lillian does is to wear her dad's old Harvard sweater. The Rich Uncle Alvin wants a new laptop. His parents are poor, though. His mom recently lost her job. His dad recently quit his job. Alvin knows that he can't ask his parents for a laptop. He decides to ask his rich uncle Todd. He drives over to Todd's house. Todd's house is beautiful. It has three stories. There is a chandelier on the ceiling. There are expensive paintings all over the place. There are five bedrooms and four bathrooms. Alvin wishes he could live there. Todd offers him something to eat. Alvin says, No thanks, I already ate. Todd asks him why he is coming. Alvin does not know what to say. He does not want to come off as rude. My laptop is really old, and I need a laptop for school. I would ask my parents, but they don't have jobs anymore, Alvin says. I understand, Todd says. Todd takes out $800 from his wallet and gives it to Alvin. Alvin jumps up and down. He has never felt so happy in his entire life. His mom asks Alvin why he is so happy. Alvin does not say anything. He doesn't want to make his mom feel bad. Losing a loved one Abby lost her mom yesterday. Her mom got into a car accident. A drunk driver hit her mom's car. The drunk driver is now in jail. Abby visited the jail to make him feel bad. You know what you did, right? Abby asked. The drunk driver nodded and said, I'm sorry. He started crying. Sorry is not going to bring my mom back. Your carelessness took away my mom. The drunk driver continued to cry. I drank because I was feeling lonely. Abby was mad and left the jail. She didn't want to see his face ever again. She wanted him to go to jail for life. Abby could barely wake up. She requested to take a week off her work. She loved her job, but she could not stop thinking about her mom. Abby's husband told her to do something instead of watching TV all day. Abby agreed with him. It was time for her to start doing something productive. She wanted to do something that would make her mom proud. Abby created a program to prevent drunk driving. She wanted to give drunk people free rides. Abby visited colleges, clubs, and bars all across the country to encourage people not to drive when drinking. Phone Invasion Ten years ago, most adults had regular cell phones. Now, people have smartphones.
With smartphones, you can not only call people, but you can also go online, download new games, calculate a math problem, organize your schedule, and more. Smartphones are really helpful. Even kids have cell phones now. People use their phones a lot these days, especially when they are waiting. People do not like to be bored, so they go on their phones. A lot of news reports are saying that people are looking at their phones way too much. People look at their phones when they are with others, and that is bad. Being addicted to something is never good. When you go into a restaurant and look at other customers, most of them have phones in their hands. They would rather text, play a game, or go online than talk to the people around them. Some restaurants have even offered a free meal or a discount if customers are willing not to use their phones for an entire hour. People also use their phones before they sleep. This is bad for them because it makes it harder for them to go to sleep. The light from the phone tricks our bodies into thinking we need to be awake. Afraid to cry. Dean was known as the tough guy at school. He always wore tight shirts that showed off his muscles. He always pushed the skinny kids at school. He always treated the teachers like they didn't matter. He never did his homework. He got in a lot of fights. People were afraid of him, and Dean loved it. Dean's world turned upside down when his brother passed away. He still went to class. His teacher was talking about Shakespeare, whom Dean's brother admired. Hearing about Shakespeare reminded Dean of his own brother. His eyes started to water. He didn't want anyone to see him cry. He got up from his desk. Dean, you can't get up while I am teaching, Mr. Chen said. Everyone stared at Dean. Everyone could see the tears in his eyes. They laughed at him. Dean ran out of the classroom. Mr. Chen followed him and sat down with him. Dean it's okay to cry. Something tragic happened. Go ahead and cry. Dean put his head on Mr. Chen's shoulder and cried out loud. It was the first time he cried in front of someone. It was the first time he didn't act tough. Letters of Recommendation Claire was applying to private schools. Most private schools required letters of recommendation. Claire did not know who to ask. She felt like her teachers did not know her that well. Claire asked her teachers anyways. Some of them said yes, and some of them said no. One week later, Miss Hershey gave Claire a letter of recommendation in an envelope. Claire wasn't supposed to open it, but she really wanted to know what Miss Hershey wrote. Claire carefully tore it open and read the letter. She was disappointed. Miss Hershey didn't write anything interesting about Claire. Miss Hershey just wrote that Claire was a smart, nice girl. 
Claire couldn't get into her top schools with that letter. Claire asked her swim coach to write her a letter of recommendation. Her swim coach knew her well. The problem was that the swim coach wasn't the best writer. He did not go to college. Claire asked him to write a letter anyways. Of course I'll write you a letter. I'll even send it to you, he said. One week later, Claire got an email from her swim coach. She was nervous to read what he wrote. Claire was impressed with the letter. Her swim coach was really funny, yet intelligent in the letter. Mom and her daughter Frances did not get along with her mom because they had different personalities and goals. Frances's mom was a CEO of a cell phone company. She was incredibly smart, having gone to Harvard University. Her mom cared a lot about money, success, and appearances. Frances was the opposite. Frances didn't go to college. She started an art business, selling her original art pieces. As long as she could feed herself and live somewhere, it was okay. She also did not mind not being famous. Frances didn't care about her appearance, either. Unlike most girls, she has her hair up to her ears. She never shaved and only owned ten pieces of clothing. Frances's mom was upset that her daughter chose this lifestyle. Whenever Frances's mom visited her daughter, they would have a fight. Frances's mom would say some rude comments about Frances's lifestyle, and Frances would tell her mom that she was greedy and shallow. Frances wanted her mom to support what she was doing. Frances was going to get married. She wanted to invite her mom to her wedding, but she knew that she wouldn't approve of her fiancé because he was exactly like Frances. However, at the end of the day, Frances loved her mom, so she gave her the wedding invitation. College admissions. It's hard to get into college these days. It used to be a lot easier. Now it's not even good enough to get good grades. You need to have good grades in advanced classes. You need to do some extracurriculars. Extracurriculars are activities you do outside of class, such as playing basketball playing the violin, singing, and more. You need to have a high score on the SAT or ACT. The SAT and ACT are used to test what you know. They both have questions on various subjects. You need to have some leadership positions. It is not just enough to be a member of a club you need to be the president or the vice president. You also need letters of recommendation, letters in which your teachers, coaches, or bosses write about your abilities and personality. It also helps if you won some awards. It shows that you can achieve something. You also have to write good essays that show who you are as a person. Colleges want people who have interesting personalities and stories. Students with good grades but boring essays will not get into the college of their dreams. Students should not be sad if they don't get into the college of their dreams. They need to know that getting into college is tougher as years go by. Life and Fear 
The terrorist attacks have scared a lot of people from studying abroad. Many students go to big cities to take pictures, shop, and explore. Terrorists attack these big cities, though, because they know that there will be a lot of people. The truth is, we should not stop people from studying abroad. These terrorist attacks can happen any time. We can't live in fear. We must do the things we love. People are also scared to travel in general because of plane accidents. Terrorists often bring explosives on planes. Some people are also scared of dying on a plane. All the passengers in Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 are missing. We still don't know what happened to them. Not too long after, all the passengers in Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 died. It was a very tragic event. It is scary that our lives can end so quickly and suddenly. We need to live life to the fullest. We need to love the people around us and be thankful for every day that we live. There are always news stories about people dying before they should. It's not the best thing to hear about, but it makes us more aware of our own lives.